You might have seen a movie where there is a fly and all of a sudden it enters a building and when you zoom close into it, you realize that this is a robot fly. And the movie is usually about this fly killing someone or spying on them. It seems ridiculous, right? But it seems like in the near future, we're going to be dealing with things like this. When you talk about wars, technology and strategy is more important than anything, even money. So that's why in most countries, most of the budget of that government goes towards the military. They're basically spending all that money to use less people in that type of warfare and outclass the opponent in every way possible. In the year 2018, a very famous journalist named Annie Jacobson exposed that DARPA, an agency of the US government, is looking for technology like this. But what the hell is DARPA? DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Annie Jacobson basically says that DARPA is looking for technology and equipment like this since the Cold War. They're basically trying to turn anything into a robot from birds, and now we've moved up to insects. In simple terms, they basically add microchips to the brains of these animals and insects and take control of how they move. You most likely notice that the United States has the highest military budget in the world, and it goes up about $20 billion a year, and the amount of money that's being spent is ridiculous. However many navy ships you buy, airplanes, it still doesn't make sense how much money there is. But then you realize that most of that money is going to research and development, things you don't physically see. And DARPA is just another branch of the military that gets that funding. We are not sure how many agencies are using the military budget of the US, but we know that most of that is going to research and development. They want to have everything advance on their plate. You might have heard Boston Dynamics, and they have a very famous robot called the Atlas. The Atlas was kind of a story or an order that came from DARPA. They basically wanted a robot that acts and moves exactly like a human. And the Atlas is pretty much the closest thing we have right now. And every single day, it's getting more and more advanced. And the Atlas is just one part of the DARPA project. Annie Jacobson says that we have very tiny drones that are at the size of a human fingernail. But its performance is just like a normal drone. The point of all this is for DARPA to send a physical drone anywhere they want and nobody realizes that they're being watched by this. They want people to realize that this is just an insect. Alongside DARPA, there are other areas that work on insects. Instead of building a drone that's fully robotic, they want to edit the nervous system or the brain of a regular insect, where it's actually an insect, but they're being artificially controlled. There are other places that work on projects like this. Like for example, the Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. In the robotic section of this university, just like what Elon Musk did in Neuralink, they are doing in this university. But instead of putting microchips into a human brain, they're actually putting it on an insect's brain, beetle to be exact. The controls they have down is that so the insect can walk, run, or stand. It's only three things they can control right now, but this is already very huge because they're slowly getting the control on how this insect moves. And the most interesting part is that the energy that's being used is the insect itself. There's no batteries or gas or diesel engines moving it. Technology like this is revolutionary, but alongside all that, it's extremely dangerous too. You can do a lot of positive things with this equipment, but alongside that, you can do much more negative things. Like for example, if technology like this gets his hands on someone that's extremely bad or anti-humanity, what will happen? It's interesting to note that most governments are trying to work their way up the ladder in this department. They know how dangerous and how much potential it has, but still, they want to be the very first ones. But how can you control an insect? 
in simple terms you only have to take over the control is to have control over their nervous system the nervous system of any animal including humans is the wiring harness of that living being and if you have control over it you have the remote so anything you say and do will go it's much more complicated than a computer's wiring harness but it's the same idea your brain is the computer in the car and you are the operator of that brain but if you take control of another species wiring harness you are the operator of that animal this is basically what Neuralink is trying to do but not for the reasons we just mentioned the idea of Neuralink is to make the brain activity work in other departments Neuralink wants to put the 100% of the nervous system control into the person's hand like for example if someone is paralyzed from the neck down they could control anything with their thoughts these were the positive things but there are many many other negative things about ideas like this the most terrifying part is that to take control over microbes and viruses many experts including annie jacobson's believe they say the near future is scarier than you think like for example they can manufacture a type of virus and take control and release it in a certain population and through that virus take control of the other people's brains the negative or positive thing about this is that we're not very far from technology like this Neuralink has already started and they have their first person that's paralyzed from the neck down and it's giving good results because the person has had it for only a few months and they could control their phone and computer with their thoughts but just like we said it's only been a few months so this is just the beginning and it's getting more and more advanced every single day a lot of people in the technology industry including Steve Wozniak believe that we should take a step back in technology like this we shouldn't move forward so quickly we should ask ourselves do we actually need technology like this in the future he says it's very important to slow down and question ourselves rather than move at speed light but unfortunately most countries want this to get done and just like we said they want to be the very first so it seems like something like this is not slowing down anytime soon it seems like DARPA is the one in first place it has a huge budget every single year and they started many many years ago but what do you guys think? Do you think technology like this is useful for humans?